<clears throat> Hello, uh, today we'll talk about three architects, uh, all born on uh, September 6th, and today is sep September 6, 2023. We'll, we'll start with Fumihiko Maki, who is today 95 years old. Let's wish him happy birthday. As you can see, born on September 6, 1928. He's a Japanese architect who teaches at Keio University SFC. In 1993, he received the Pritzker Prize for his work, which often explores pioneering uses of new materials and fuses the cultures of East and West. Anyway, this is not my description. It's from Wikipedia, this is the man, 95 years old today. Happy birthday, Mr. Maki. Um, a gentleman. Of course, educated at Harvard as well, as a true gentleman uh, was and is supposed to be educated. Steinberg Hall at Washington University. Now we go through his uh, built works, 1960 in St. Louis, the United States. I like this, uh, these early works from, um, you know, the 50s and 60s with the, um, uh, Courageous uh, and optimistic modernist, but not uh, not superficially so. So this architecture from mid-century, in my opinion, um, well, it does it does receive attention and it deserves attention, in my opinion. Again, it's not an architecture that is alarmingly, uh, you know, innovative, so to speak, but in its Ambiguities, in a way, and it's uh, you know it's in a way an architecture on the threshold. It is modern, but uh, with still a certain sense of reticence. St. Louis, but the city itself is another story. It used to be the crime capital of the United States, St. Louis. So we cannot truly really talk about reticence. Um, vis-a-vis -vis the city within which this building finds itself. Hillside Terrace, 1969 in Tokyo. A fine housing complex by Fumihiko Maki. Uh, you know, uh, again, the, his architecture is um, uh, Discreet in a, in, a, in, in a good sense of the word, and maybe the word discreet should be employed uh, very often, if not always, in a good sense. 1969, 1998, I guess that there was, um, you know, uh, added something later, 30 years later almost. Tokyo. Yeah, a housing complex which is uh, uh, sensitive and uh, and not extravagant. Fumihi Komaki. Work at Expo 70 in Osaka, the famous uh, world exhibition in Osaka, 1970. He worked with Kenzo Tange and others, Kionori Kikutake, Arata Isozaki, the way very important architects at the time, all of them, I mean, the, the ones that I mentioned, um, well, with the exception of Kikutake receiving the Pritzker Prize, Kenzo Tange received it, Arata Isozaki received it, and Fumihiko Maki received it. So what is it about these Japanese? Traveling back in time to the streets of Osaka, Japan in 1970, people today can only imagine the visions many architects around the globe had for future designs and innovative building technologies that would later ignite today's generation of architects. The theme of the expo was progress and harmony for mankind. Hello, Ukraine. And the aim was to showcase the possibilities of modern technology to create a foundation for a high quality of life and peace throughout the world. Hello, Mr. Putin. 
images from the event after the break. Uh, <laughs> You know, this is the text I took from somewhere, but there, there was no break. There is no break. A total of 77 countries attended the event, and the number of visitors surpassed 64 million people, making it one of the largest and best attended expositions in history. This was the first World's Fair to be held in Japan. And a few years from now, it will return to Osaka. So, some images. I don't know exactly what uh, Fumihiko Maki did here, but yes, it was a, a splendid uh, display of optimism vis a vis the future. Uh, this one, I think, was by uh, Kikutake. Uh, and uh, anyway, the future is now. I mean, <laughs> This was the mentality, the, but the future was not quite like this. Um, this is uh, Kisho Kurokawa, another important Japanese architect. Now the spiral in 1985 in Tokyo. It's, we don't really see the spiral here, but this is the building called the spiral in Tokyo by Fumihiko Maki, a hybrid building with various functions. And I like the hybridity of, um, in architecture in general and uh, in this building in particular. Uh, Fumihiko Maki was and is an architect who can accommodate various things within a building, and bring them together, maybe because of his uh, diplomatic skills and a certain sense of tolerance. Designed in 1983 for the lingerie company Walku, and that has become one of the best known works of Maki. Spiral is a, is a place where people can, can drop by whenever they want to experience genuine art to look at exhibits over a cup of tea or enjoy a live concert without, with, while having drinks. Therefore, the spiral building is designed to meet varied needs the flexibility, I guess. The concept, as part of the concept of fusion of art and life, spiral building combine the use of commercial functions fashion shops, stores, restaurant, cafe, beauty salon with cultural and artistic activities carried out in a multi-purpose room, fashion shows, art and contemporary design exhibitions, theater, dance, concerts, etc. Here is the spiral. Uh, the interior, yes, the spiral does show up. This um, brings to mind some echoes from um, a store um, designed by uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, uh, and maybe even to an extent um, another designed by him, the famous Guggenheim Museum. But towards the outside, you don't anticipate um, the presence of the spiral in uh, Fumihiko Maki's uh, work. Uh, this is one of the least flamboyant uh, architects in contemporary times, Fumihiko Maki. Even the spiral itself, explicit as it is inside, is uh, rather something a little bit uh, unusual in his work. Now, uh, a gymnasium from 1984, Fujisawa Municipal uh, uh, gymnasium. This is a more futuristic structure, if I am to call it so. Um, metallic as it is. He took risks. By any important architect takes risks, even those with a more uh, mellow, so to speak, uh, uh, relationship with life and reality in general. Japan built some, some remarkable gymnasiums. Uh, if we had to think also about uh, what Kenzo Tange did, but was not the only country. But they executed impeccably, as you can see. It's, 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 a, it's an architectural mechanism impeccably, impeccably built. Makuhari Mese, 1989, Chiba. I don't know what this is. Let's read. 
formerly known as the Nippon Convention Center, the Makuhari Messe, derived from the German word meaning trade fair, is the second largest convention center in Japan behind only Tokyo Big Site. Makuhari Mese was designed by famous Japanese architect Fumihiko Maki and was completed in 1989 with the intention of establishing the area of Makuhari as an architectural destination separate from the Tokyo proper, sited in the northwest corner of the Chiba Prefecture in eastern Tokyo. The Mese's expansive interiors and multitude of exhibition halls lends itself to high capacity events, including a plethora of recent high-tech expositions and trade shows. The four level complex exceeds 1,000 square feet, 1 million, sorry, 1 million square feet of floor area and is comprised of 11 exhibition halls. Uh, well, these are numbers, but now let's now look at the quality of the building. It's huge indeed. Uh, for a prosperous uh, Japan. You would say there isn't a lot of reticence here. Well, in terms of dimensions, it's true, there isn't. But this was the program required from the architect. A huge a hall, um, you know. And here is, a, you know, a little more architectural flying because of these uh, canopies, but otherwise the building itself is just a, a huge convention center. Fumihi Komaki. Tokyo Metropolitan Gymnasium, 1991. Another huge space without, uh, you know, um, uncomfortable uh, pillars or, uh, you know, uh, disturbing the central space. Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco, 1993. Well, we had seen better buildings by him already. Republic Polytechnic in Singapore, 2006. An educational complex of buildings. What can we say? Nothing really very, very moving here in my opinion. Except perhaps the decentralization of a possible monolith. And, and that's, I think, a good thing. Delegation of the Ismaili Imamat. 2018 Ottawa, uh, I guess, um, religious structure. But this one also, uh, I don't know. Uh, but we can appreciate the, the mesh of the facade, ornamental as it is, and bringing in a sensitivity that is so needed in architecture and life alike. But towards the exterior, uh, it's a rather, rather blunt architecture, if the word is not too severe. Annenberg Public Policy Center at the University of Pennsylvania, 2009. Glass, glass, and glass again, long live air conditioning. Perfectly executed, yes. But look at that facade covered in glass, hit by the sunlight. MIT Media Lab extension at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, 2009 in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Umihi Komaki again, gray architecture, G-R-A-Y and not G-R-E-A-T, if you allow me the, the the maliciousness, it's, it's another building, in my opinion. 
probably functions well, but 51 Astor Place, 2013 in Manhattan, New York. I don't know, was it built? I'm not sure. Yeah, it was built, 2013. Yeah. I don't know who that gentleman on the left is, maybe the developer, but on the right is the architect, Kumiki Komaki. Now, Tower 4 at the World Trade Center. I mentioned that he built one of them, the Tower 4, 150 Greenwich Street of the new World Trade Center, also built in 2013 in Manhattan. It's, uh, it's a prism, you know, very, very well executed, but I actually like its elegance and its lack of, uh, you know, strident uh, flamboyance. Kumihi Komaki, again, glass and long live glass and long live the <laughs> the alarming electricity bills. Aga Khan Museum, 2014 in Toronto. An international architect, no doubt, Kumihi Komaki. Toronto, Singapore, New York, San Francisco, and so on. With fame comes a plethora of uh, commissions. Another work in Singapore, Skyline at Orchard Boulevard, uh, tall building. We know that um, Singapore is the Switzerland of Southeast Asia. So they can build anything. There is the money and there is the political will. So they invite architects from uh, various countries of fame to build, build, and build again. The Switzerland of South Southeast Asia affords uh, direction of uh, many ambitious projects. Sea World Culture and uh, Art Center. 2017 in I don't know what this is, but we can read here. Uh, Maki and Associate was invited by China Merchants Property Development. Yes, China, one of the most revered Chinese real estate companies to undertake our, I mean, they wrote this, I guess, first project in China. Our mission was to design the first cultural facility within the Sea World's multi-use development that serves as, as a dignified house of art and culture for Shenzhen and Greater China. The building form follows uh, a two-part composition, a podium and a pavilion. The sculptural podium clad in white and green granite houses the museum and retail functions. The pavilion consists of three cantilevered volumes protruding to the surrounding city, mountain, park, and sea. The three volumes house a theater, restaurant, and multi-purpose hall. I always wonder why is it that we have these such expressions, art and culture, as if art is not part of culture. This is the building, or yeah, it's, it's a good work, but Again, not alarmingly innovative. And some slanted uh, columns, whiteness. But the good thing is again that, that it's not it's not very centralized or monolithic. So there are various parts that you know create a sense of, a sense of um, you know variety. But for me, it's too septic, it's too, I don't know. This is how art is. 
for me, art is uh, descends into the into the viscerality of the world. So a, a building destined to art perhaps should have some viscerality too, if I am to call it so. It's it's a good building though. China, Kumihi Komaki. Bridging between the two cultures and the two countries. We know that there wasn't always peace between China and Japan. So much whiteness does tire me off, I confess. Where are the graffiti artists to smash the, the walls with their uh, violent colors and messages? Really, where are they? Or maybe in China they cannot afford to live adventurously. They might be thrown in, in, in prison. Fortunately, there are some projections here, large projections. But again, 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 these tiring white walls, of course, waiting for the rebelliousness of art. But why? Anyway. China, a nice sketch by Fumihi Komaki, rather poetical. And the plants, these are probably taken from uh, Arch Daily. They, they show a lot of drawings, and I'm glad they do, but they're always very whitish and gray and rather pale. But but I'm grateful that they, they, they document very well every project. That's a, that's a good thing, actually. It's just that the drawings are all as if they are done by the same people. China. Works in progress, Fumihi Komaki. United Nations new building in New York City. Uh, I don't know exactly what he was supposed to do here and he, he, his proposal. I guess he worked with a, a team just as uh, it happened when originally the United Nations building was built. And Andhra Pradesh capital city, Amaravati in India. Uh, I think, I don't, I'm not sure if this building, um, this, uh, this project was, uh, Sorry, something is happening here. Do you see any image? <laughs> you probably do. Hello? Do you see the image? We see the writing. Pardon? No, we see the writing. Pardon? You see, see the, the writing. writing. Okay, last week it was reported that Foster and Partners had been selected to design the capital complex of Amaravati, a new, a new capital city for the state of Andhra Pradesh in southeastern India. The commission, however, has not come without controversy. As revealed by Indian news company, The Wire, the project had earlier been awarded through invited competition to Japanese firm Maki and Associates who were later removed from the project under, certain, under uncertain circumstances. So I guess, uh, you know, things happened. Happened. That this was his, uh, his project, you know. Um, anyway, I don't know what to think of it. You know, it's, yes, it's serene, but Serene, serene, but they, there was a need for a statue either made by Alexander Calder or Calder-like. Anyway, it was not built in India and his project or their project was um, removed uh, under, you know, uh, unknown circumstances.
absorbing the, the trends, I would say, in a discreet manner. That's what uh, Fumi Hikomaki and partners did. Uh, you also have to understand, Maki at the time of this uh, project was almost 90, 90 years old. Reinhard Ernst Museum and in Bison by this this button. Uh, again, too much whiteness. But but what could this be? Could this be the drawing? No, this is the this is the, the work of the artist, and this is the work of the architect. So there is a difference, isn't it? The the museum, uh, the 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 museum, the Reinhard Ernst, Ernst Reinhard, I guess is the name of the artist, and the museum dedicated to him is like this, proposed by Fumi Hikomaki, but he, the artwork of the artist is totally different. Well, I don't know what to think about this. Why is it that architects are so, you know, pudic, uh, or I, I don't know, prudent, or... Uh, I don't know how to describe them. You know, like here is the artist and here is the architect. I mean, the building was probably finalized. The last image I have on, in this presentation is this one. So the construction began, but uh, I don't have later images of it. But we do see, you know, in these renderings, what the museum was supposed to be for this artist, Dionysian as he is, an Apollonian building for a Dionysian artist. So let's wish happy birthday to Fumihiko Maki. Thank you.